pressure at all. That's quite a hard act to follow, actually. So, uh, yeah, it was um, fantastic to hear all the presentations that we've heard today. Um, so I'm your last presentation of the morning session. Um, my name is Lisa Jarvis and I'm the Female Veterans Transformation Programme Lead. I'll try and keep this short and sweet, mainly because I know you'll all want your lunch. But also, and probably more importantly, I am wearing ridiculous heels. My feet are killing me and I want to put my trainers on. So um, if you do grab me in lunch break, I will be a lot shorter. So just to say it's supposed to give you confidence. I'm just wearing trainers next time. So. OK, so I'm here to, uh, today to obviously talk about female veterans and female veterans have been underrepresented in the design, development and provision of veteran services over many years. And actually, what we have learnt is that women's needs are not being met and actually not just by the military charity sector, but by many sectors. Now, I want to caveat this presentation by saying that this is not about saying that all women who have served have had a terrible time. Actually, many have had a fantastic career, have learned fantastic skills and are able to transition into civilian life in a fantastic way and live great lives. But actually, some don't. And actually, we need to make sure that we're supporting those women in the right way. You know, there are about 13 percent of our veteran community that is women. And that's not an insignificant number. So we do need to make sure that all of us in this room are aware that women also served. And also, shock horror, women are a little bit different. And actually, we do have some specific needs. So that's what our project is trying to look at. So this is our delivery plan. So we're a three year funded project funded by the Armed Forces Covenant Fund Trust and NHS England. And the idea is to really transform the sector. So it's to really make sure that actually everybody who's out there working with veterans, but also the general public, is aware that actually in that community, there might be women who have served. And actually, how do we make people more aware of those specific needs and what we can do to provide the right support in the right way, in a way that actually matters to people and will make that difference? So we're trying to use these three years to create a toolkit, a resource, whatever it is that we might eventually call it, um, so that actually every service can access this. So you might just dip in and out of it, or you might need something that's really detailed, and that's what we're working to create. So we're hosted by the Women's Royal Army Corps Association, and we report into the COBSEO Female Veterans Cluster. But we have tried to make ourselves independent. And so what you will see is our logo, which is our lovely purple swirly logo up in the top. And we have our own website um, because actually we want to make sure that this is available to everybody across all three services and that everybody feels that they can be part of this. We also work across the whole of the UK. So we include the devolved administrations as well. When I say we, I should actually be really, really clear that the we in this is 1.6 full time members of staff. That's not a very big team. And so all of this work is really dependent on the collaboration and partnership work of everybody who sat in this room and is out there working in this space. We have a fantastic steering group who really help direct uh, the travel. Um, and that includes Nikki Mur Murdoch, our big hitter. Um, and Ali Brown is also the chair of our steering group. But we also have representatives from each of the services as well to make sure that we are really making sure we meet the needs of all women who have served. The project is split into four different areas. We have just come to the end of our first year. What a year it's been. I, I don't think my backside has hit a chair yet. I have been running around all over the UK um, trying to actually pull this together with my colleague Hannah West. The first phase has been around gathering the evidence. So it's about making sure that we pull together the research. There has been a lot of research that has been conducted on women veterans over the last 10 years or so. Um, but actually, it's not necessarily accessible to everybody. Some of the reports we read were over 100 pages long. And actually, we're all busy people. We don't necessarily have the time to read that level of detail. 
So we conducted an evidence review of 62 papers and pulled that together into about a 25 page document, which covers all the key messages from all that research. Um, and we also created an infographic which shows you at a glance um, what those key needs will be. And I'll show you that in a minute. We're smack bang in the middle of our co-production phase at the moment. We want to make sure that we really build this on the needs of women veterans. We want to make sure that their voices are very much at the heart of what we are telling the sector needs to happen and needs to change. And so over the summer, we have done two elements of co-design and co-production. We did an online questionnaire and we're doing focus groups at the moment. And again, I'll, I'll tell you some initial findings of that in a moment. We'll then move into our toolkit development. And this is where we really need to engage with you. We need to know what is going to work for you, your services, because we know you are busy people. And I could go away and create something that is a 50 page document, an encyclopedia of everything you need to know, and nobody ever uses it. So I need to know what's gonna work for you. More importantly, what isn't? Tell me what you're never going to look at, you're never going to use, because otherwise this doesn't make any sense if it's not gonna have sustainability going forward. And then the last phase will be our education and launch where we take it out and make sure that people are really able to use it and that it is embedded into service provision. So where are we now? So as I say, phase one has finished. The evidence review was published on uh, International Women's Day on the 8th of March. It's on our website, um, as well as everything is on our website. So you can see the blogs, you can see feedback from the consultation, focus group feedback, all sorts of different ways that you can get involved. Um, I really need one of those fancy QR codes, Kate, that you do so that people can go to the, the website. So I'll be tapping you up for that in lunchtime. Um, but it's also been, like I say, a collaborative approach. So we've made sure that we've engaged with critical friends and we really need that critical bit. We don't want people to just tell us, oh, this is amazing and great. We need people to go, mm, you haven't quite got that right. So that actually we do make sure that in the long term, this has got real life. So as I say, we created this infographic, which is our statement of need. I don't expect you to read it because it's blurry and uh, small, but it covers what the key issues were from the research. Um, and one of the big things was around identity. We've used the term veteran all day today, and we use it all the time in our work. But actually what the research is telling us is that only about 30% of women identify with the term veteran. And so we need to be making sure that we're asking the right question, that we're asking, have you ever served rather than are you a veteran? And that actually we're reaching into different communities to make sure that we are supporting women who might have served with that recognition of women is really important. And then also things around access to services, making sure that there are safe spaces to go. You'll see a bit later that some women don't want anything different. They just want to kind of be in services alongside the guys because that's how they served and that's what they want. But they just want to feel that people understand them. Whereas other women, through some of the experiences that they've had, want female specific services run by women for women. Um, and so, as I say, we uh, we have rebranded the, the project to make sure that we're independent. And we were really lucky that we used um, an organisation called Hubble, who were veteran and military spouse led to help us design the imagery, the branding, the colour scheme that we used. So, as I say, we're in our consultation and co-production phase at the moment. And like I say, it's really important that those voices are at the heart of what we do. We were also really keen to make sure that this was forward looking. There's been a lot of research. We've gathered that. We know what the issues are. We know what the problems are. But so what? What are we actually going to do about it? How are we going to take action and change things? And so our question was, what does good look like in terms of service provision? And that's what we use the questionnaires and the focus groups to really do a deep dive into. So this is kind of brand new. You're the first people to publicly see this. Um, so we were really hoping when we put the online questionnaire out there that we'd get about 100 responses from female veterans um, and we'd be really pleased if that's what we got. And we had 602 responses, which is fantastic. 
until you come to the point where you got analyze all that data because it's qualitative. So 602 responses that you really want to give time to, to really understand what's going on for people. But it's fantastic that women have really lent into this, but also that the devolved administrations have lent into this as well. We had responses from across the whole of the UK, but also from Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. So we're really able to build this really good picture of what's going on. We also ask service, uh, services to respond to this as well because we recognise that not all women will want to get involved and actually sometimes support services will have an idea of what's going on. So these are the key themes that have come out. Now, what I will say is that at the end of September, beginning of October, we're hoping to put something out there more publicly with more detail uh, around the analysis because obviously this is just some key themes. Um, but the data is so rich and so powerful and is going to really help us shape what happens next. So the key themes are that there needs to be education about the needs of female veterans, that it's essential for all services. And some services are admitting that they really don't know actually about the specific needs of female veterans. And so how do we make people more aware, more able to recognise female veterans, more able to ask that question? There's something really important about branding, imagery and promotion of services so that female veterans feel welcome and feel like they can walk through the door and understand what's available to them. We did a bit of a, a kind of um, a Google search of imagery um, for one of the focus groups that we did. And it is obviously very male orientated. It's very khaki, actually, what's out there at the moment, and doesn't necessarily give a really good picture to women that these services are available for them as well. Something around access. So women need to be able to access services where they live, so across the country. It's no good having amazing services like Everton in the community that we've got here um, and places like Salute Her if that's not available for everyone because they really need to access that. We also need to have places where women feel safe um, and also can provide childcare or you can bring children with you. Services that are delivered in a person-centred way. Now, and this is music to my ears. So I worked for NHS for seven, eight years um, in the um, personalised care team. Um, and I, as Guy said, I led the uh, social prescribing for the armed forces community demonstrator. So person-centred approaches are absolutely key to the way that we work. We can no longer afford to look in silos at the needs of anybody, uh, and particularly obviously female veterans. There are so many interdependencies that we have to look at a person as a whole person and actually ask that question, what matters to you? You know, what are the things that you need and how can we better support you through both a medical model and a social model? And also we need to recognise, as I said, that some women, they don't want separate services. They just want to feel that they are welcome in those services that are available for all veterans. But there are some areas where we really do need to have female, spe female specific services, particularly for things around sexually inappropriate behaviours, including rape and sexual assault. And also the last one asking the question. Don't ask if you're a veteran, ask have you ever served? And actually the NHS's campaign of say you served is fantastic because actually people are able to say whether they served one day, one week, one year, 30 years, they're able to say they served and they can understand that and, and kind of link to that much better than that veteran label. So what next? So we are now moving into the toolkit design. And we're calling it a toolkit at the moment, but that name might change because this is iterative. We have to make sure that we're flexible and we're meeting the needs of services out there so that we actually provide you with something that is useful. So we want to be starting to engage with providers across all sectors, because actually this is not just about the charity sector, it's about the commercial sector and the statutory sector as well. It, we want to be working with GPs, we want to be working with other healthcare providers, we want to be working with employers. And actually, it might be that we need to have a very simple checklist. That might be enough. But actually, for some things, we might need more. But until you tell us what it is that you need and what's going to work for you, we can't design that. And so, if you grab me at lunchtime, I'd like to know if you want to help us. You know, who would be interested in helping us design the toolkit? 